Chester's Meeting House, History, and Preservation, Chester, New Hampshire. Hi, I'm Jackie Brown from the Chester Historical Society. I'm standing in front of the Chester Meeting House, which is on the National Historic Registry. It was built in 1773. And in 1776, the Declaration of Independence was read here. All town business was voted inside of this building. And this icon has to be preserved. The Meeting House clock is a fine E. Howard clock, Model 1S, S is for Stryker. It is owned by the town of Chester and is maintained by the town of Chester and is included in the town insurance coverage. Howard clocks are very prized clocks. This one was installed in 1882. The clock was wound weekly for 45 years by Robert Hazelton until 1958. Then it was wound by several young men for 50 cents a week. The selectmen found it difficult to find people to climb the steep 108 steps to the belfry and turn the handle 150 times, which lifted 500 pounds of stone. In 1976, the residents of Chester voted to electrify the town clock. When Reverend Flagg, our second minister, died in 1796, the bell broke, tolling for his funeral, as did the next two bells. The fourth bell, and the one that tolls today, was installed in 1828. We have Daryl Quinn to thank for the fabulous care he takes of the clock, the bell, and the striker. What would we do if we did not have this town icon? All these postcards were sold at Wilkins store in the 1800s. Many of our town report books depict this icon. Town memorabilia, like this afghan. Our town sign. Yes, this is our skyline. Music is certainly very important in the wonderful history of this church. True, it was not included in the beginning. The first mention of music was the singing of Dr. Watts' Psalms and Hymns in 1770. It was 1806 when a small bass violin and clarinet were allowed to accompany the voices. When they reached more of the church in 1839, a choir lock was added. Singing was becoming popular and a small organ was introduced in 1850. A wonderful Woodbury and Harris tracker action organ purchased by the Young People's Society for $1,050 was installed during Reverend Charles Tenney's time, 1872 to 1888. It was pumped by hand until 1953 when it was electrified. I'm not sure when the choir actually began, though the first choir director is listed in 1839. The choir is a special place in my heart as my family was so involved. Both of my great-granddaughters, my grandfather actually sang in the choir at the same time I did. My granddaughter once sang with me. My cousin George's wife, Linda, also was in the choir. Both of us were in this choir over the course of 50 years. She too had a granddaughter, Elena Puglia, who often sang, and she had just a wonderful soprano voice. Okay, my name is John Coleman, and this story begins in 1960. The story begins as a man in Chester named John West saw a problem and envisioned a solution to the problem. The church had for years been overcrowded in the vestry with Sunday school and Bible school classrooms and toilet facilities. When the church, the present church was moved to its present location, it had room for a single bathroom and room for ductwork and a furnace. The remainder was made up of ledge, boulders, and packed earth. <clears throat> John made known to the town as a whole his vision and plans for a church basement to include toilets, classrooms, and a minister's office. John received much help from the fire department 
the town and equipment and resources from the I.C. Hazelden Company, P.K. Lindsay Company in Deerfield, and Ray Dolph Jr. in Chester. Hundreds of hours were spent digging by hand, jackhammers, and tractor moving massive amounts of material. The project was completed in 1963, and the minister's office was named the John West Room in his honor. Without John West's foresight, leadership, and determination, this project would never have been completed. My name is George Noyce. I've been a member of this church for a good many years. To start with, in January 22, 1927, my father, Warren Noyce, and my mother, Evelyn Lane, were married in this church. They were the first couple to be married in this church, but before that, most people were married at home. Now, I am the second son of the Noyces, and I was baptized in this church in April, uh, on Easter Sunday, April 1930, yeah, 1930. As a note of interest, when my grandfather, Walter Lane, died, his wife put into, asked the church if she could take his place as a deacon. And so she became the first deaconess in this church. We have four children. We have three were married in this church. We have three grandchildren who were married in this church. And three great-grandchildren baptized in this church. Okay, uh, my name is Cheryl Baker, and my family and I were communicants of St. Jerome's Mission. St. Jerome's was a mission church, with the main church being in St. Paul's Catholic Church in Candia. In 1971, St. Paul's Catholic Church was formed, and in 1972, the first Mass was held in Chester. The Mass was originally held in the Town Hall, but soon after was moved to the Chester Congregational Baptist Church. Many families in Chester gathered every Saturday evening at 5.30 to celebrate Mass. First Communions were held yearly, and many weddings, funerals, and baptisms were celebrated by Mass in this church. The mission was a very vibrant community uh, and participated in many ecumenical services with the Chester Church. Easter Sunrise Service was a gathering for both the Protestant and Catholics in the community, and members of St. Jerome were often invited to participate as readers and enjoyed a breakfast, a fellowship breakfast, after the service. Sometimes ashes were delivered to the pastor and they were distributed on Ash Wednesday. In 1997, St. Jerome celebrated their 25th anniversary by offering a special mass and a pig roast and invited the members of the Chester Church to join. In honor of our 25th year in Chester, members of St. Jerome's made this beautiful quilt that we have and presented it to the Chester Church in appreciation of all the years that we have been together. It makes many St. Jerome's members feel wonderful when they see this quilt still displayed in the sanctuary. For 32 years, the families of St. Jerome Mission enjoyed the friendship and close relationship with the Chester Congregational Baptist Church. In 2004, St. Jerome celebrated their last Mass. The families that were part of St. Jerome's were, for so many years have never forgotten the wonderful relationship that we had and the memories of those special times shared with the Chester Congregational Baptist Church members. I'm Joanne Millsaps. Almost 90 years after the Congregational Parish was incorporated in Chester, the Baptist Church was incorporated here. It had great vitality into the 1900s, even replacing its first building with one next to the town common. However, in the early 1930s, it found it couldn't afford to pay for a pastor or to keep its building open. In 1937, the Congregationalists invited them to be guests at their annual meeting, and a friendship formed that led to the two churches signing Articles of Agreement in 1942 to worship together with one pastor. In 1945, the Baptists sold everything from their church. The only physical piece remaining today is their tall Baptist pulpit. 
The fact that our partnership began with friendship and that they adopted a working structure very respectful of each church's independence and denominational differences helped create the harmony that followed. The members of each church became associate members of the other church, able to vote on everything except the other's denominational matters. Both churches kept their own bylaws, officers, and deacons and held regular meetings. We worked smoothly within this system until we drew up a new set of bylaws in the 1990s that would allow us to function as one church while still retaining our actual status as two churches. It is an extraordinary church. I have a few slides that I'm gonna show you tonight of, of parts of the church that you may or may not have seen. Um, I heard mentioned that you couldn't see the 1782 meeting house. Congregational Baptist Church are so pleased to have Aaron Sturgis and his team at Preservation Timber Framing Incorporated on board. And they are planning to work on our historic building throughout 2021, beginning in the spring. Wouldn't it be perfect to have it all finished in time for our town's 300th anniversary in 2022? This summer, at the Chester Town Meeting, townspeople voted $25,000 any money given toward this project by March of 2021. The town-owned clock and the bell and the cast in the steeple certainly mean a great deal to many people here in town. The good news is that we are well over two-thirds of the way toward meeting our $500,000 goal thanks to the generosity so far of our members and friends. Now we urgently ask for the help of our neighbors and the greater community every bit helps and it feels so good to drive by this iconic building and to feel proud that you have helped we do encourage businesses and foundations to consider becoming preservation partners with gifts of uh, one thousand dollars or more we have applied for an LCHIP grant but those are highly competitive all donations are tax deductible and will go entirely toward the preservation of this meeting house Please visit our Facebook page or our website at chesternhchurch.org and look for the large donate button. It really does take a village 